There are very few written accounts. Uh, and most of the written accounts about the confrontation of white women and Native American women are, of course, by the white women. It's almost as if, if you can't write it down, it didn't happen. And for this reason, Native American history has for a long time suffered, and it's only been ethnographers and archaeologists and anthropologists who've managed to reproduce the structure of Native American society. But it's very hard to find a Native American woman's account of her life. What we can find are the accounts of white women who became adopted members of Native American tribes. And since this is about women's history, I can't resist this digression. Uh, often uh, in Native American raids of white communities, Massachusetts, that is the areas that bordered uh, Native American lands, uh, women would be captured. And the Puritans in particular uh, went to great lengths to redeem their captives. That is to get back this flower of English womanhood uh, from savages, from these heathen savages. And they would pay ransoms. And they would go and they would get the women and uh, children, if there were children there. And in some cases, it had been several years and the women had children from Native American men. And they would redeem them and they would head back through the forest to uh, to civilization, and they would camp out for the night. And in the morning, when they woke up, the women were gone. The women had run back to the Native American community that they had been redeemed from, because in fact, for them, life was much more free, they had much more liberty, and they had a, a greater sense of themselves as significant and important people and much more autonomy in the Native American community than they had in patriarchal, hierarchical, domestic life in uh, New England. And we have accounts of some of the women who decided to stay, uh, who wrote about why, and one of the central reasons was that housework on the frontier for in white families as on the frontier a century later when uh, uh, Little House on the Prairie become, writes about, uh, tells about, it was lonely. It was isolated. But Native American women worked as a group and they were allowed to bring their children with them into the fields and it was, uh, it was friendly. It was uh, a collective experience. And for many of these white women, this was uh, uh, such a difference and, and so much uh, better life, better quality of life, that they preferred to stay uh, as, as uh, members of the Native American tribe. And, and so you can get insights into what it was like to be a woman in, in Native American society, not from Native American women, but from white women who became adopted members of that society. And you can read these in what we call captivity narratives. You can also read them in a very wonderful book by John Demos called The Unredeemed Captive, which tells the story of decades-long attempt by a minister and his family in Massachusetts to get a woman to come home, quote, come home. And her repeated uh, attempts to explain to them, I'm very happy where I am. I'm married to a wonderful man. I have a good life. I, I really don't want to come back to Puritan society. And so you can get a sense, the best sense, I think, written sense, if you're, if you're hoping to teach it from these captivity narratives rather than hoping to find a Native American woman who through some miracle has decided to write a diary in English.